Hello, you're listening to the Money and Business Hero podcast, where we're talking about the three pillars of financial success, money mindset, money management, and money making, and how these can help you to improve your financial life. Welcome, and thank you for listening. My name is Florian Fritz, and today I have another very special guest. Panos Mekras is a specialist on cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, DeFi, NFTs, and everything that comes to this. He recently published a book about it, and we are going to talk about how you can profit from crypto. Welcome, Panos. Great to have you. Great. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, talk about uh, this technological breakthrough. So yeah, let's begin. Let's begin. Let's start with how did you get into crypto? Not everybody is involved in that topic. <laughs> Well, everything began in uh, 2016, uh, while you know I was accidentally scrolling on Facebook, and uh, yeah, I fell into an article about Bitcoin. Uh, it was talking about uh, its price that it was approaching $1,000, and I decided to click on it. Uh, at that time, I was studying finance, so I was generally interested in investments and uh, trying to start, you know, investing as a young person and start, you know, my investing journey. So, yeah, I clicked on that article and uh, I read it and everything changed uh, from that moment. I was drawn to the idea and the technology and uh, I started reading and learning more and more about the technology. And a few months later, I decided to invest in crypto for the first time. And, uh, yeah, the journey basically began, began from there. And uh, at first... You know, all I saw was an amazing opportunity to make money because it was a new industry mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, not many people knew about it. So when uh, you see something such as revolutionary, such a technology that uh, not many, many people know yet, then I think it's a great opportunity to jump right in and uh, learn as much as possible about it. So... As time went on, I understood more and more about the technology and uh, I understood it was much more than just making money, just, you know, a, a, a quick way, let's say, to make money, like many people perceive it. Mm -hmm. And I realized it was much more about uh, the goal of Satoshi Nakamoto, which is the anonymous, uh, you know, person or group, we don't know yet, uh, that created Bitcoin. And... His or, you know, her or their philosophy was to decentralize and democratize money mm -hmm. and finance and basically all the other industries, uh, this technology is disrupting. And I would say the aim of the crypto movement is to promote financial freedom and uh, decentralization by challenging power structures. Because uh, let's not forget that the reason Bitcoin was created, it was in 2009, right after the global financial crisis and people losing trust to governments and financial institutions. So that was a big moment right there. And uh, the potential of blockchain technology to empower uh, individuals and communities uh, is what intrigues me the most. And I have always stated that uh, if the technology succeeds and you are invested in good crypto projects, then you'll make money as well. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not needed to be stated. So I'm here now because I want to be a part of this movement as an early adopter, uh, as an investor, and as a user, of course. I want to be a part of the technological breakthrough that uh, gives you full control of your money, assets, and data. So that, that was uh, more or less my journey and uh, how I started. Great, thank you. And before we get into what is actually a good crypto project, how do I find that out? Um, maybe for people, there's lots of people who have heard of crypto and have heard of Bitcoin, but don't really, still don't really know what it is. Uh, yeah, that's true. Can you give a brief overview. What is blockchain? What is what is a cryptocurrency actually? Uh, well, let's start from blockchain, which is the underlying uh, technology of cryptocurrencies, and. Uh, in simple words, blockchain can be described as a value exchange protocol. It's uh, basically a database for people that uh, you know are not familiar with uh, more complex terms. And uh, 
it can be, it's a database that can be used to track ownership, uh, transfers and provenance of assets. It's, uh, if you are familiar with accounting, it's uh, more or less the same thing. You can just, uh, it's like an accounting entry. You just track, uh, you know, data and you, you know, all transactions are being recorded. And uh, it, uh, it allows any type of asset to be transferred from one party directly to another with no middleman. That's the goal. And every transfer, every transaction is validated permanent and completed quickly. So at its core, uh, blockchain technology provides an infra infrastructure for decentralized trust. Uh, it offers a cryptographically secure end-to-end -end payment flow with uh, transaction immutability and consistency in uh, information sharing. And the key difference between uh, blockchain and the uh, traditional databases, which we all know that uh, you know banks use, that mm -hmm. almost every business in the world uses, they are basically centralized databases. Even uh, you know Excel can be seen as a database that even many businesses today use for uh, you know their transactions or to record uh, information. And the main difference is uh, public verifiability, which is enabled by integrity and transparency, which makes it almost impossible to hack. So there are uh, actually the users, let's say computers that uh, you use a computer to participate in a blockchain network. And uh, in that way, you can actually contribute and uh, contribute in the validation of the network and as as many as computers are there in the world, the strongest the network is. And when you don't have a centralized party to attack, like for example, a bank, then you can hack it. It's, it's impossible to like attack millions of people or computers uh, in the world at the same time. So that's why blockchain is so secure and uh, it's so you know strong and uh, it has all these amazing features that uh, makes it great to use for any type of uh, you know payment uh, and regarding use cases that have to do with information data yeah everything that has to do with money and data is uh, you know blockchain can make it better so moving on to cryptocurrencies uh, they are basically digital assets that or you know virtual currencies that are many names uh, that people, uh, you know, describe them and they are based on blockchain technology. And uh, they can be described as a digital form of money as well that exists only digitally. And the main difference between crypto and the digital money that we already use in our daily life, such as uh, credit or debit cards or uh, PayPal, for example, or, uh, you know, e-banking transfers, all this is digital money. They, in fact, over 90% of uh, fiat money that exists today is only digitally on computers. It doesn't exist on cash. Mm -hmm. So we already use digital money, but cryptocurrencies take that one, one step further by providing this decentralization and uh, a cryptocurrency is not issued by any government or central bank. And uh, the goal is to be decentralized and based on a permissionless and uh, immutable ledger, which is a blockchain network. Uh, but there is also a misconception because cryptocurrencies are not just currencies as its name states. They can be many things at the same time and used for several use cases. That's why some people av avoid this term and uh, use uh, crypto assets or uh, crypto tokens or just crypto instead. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically all mean the same thing. Uh, you can think of it like the internet. Uh, you don't have just, the internet can be used just for one thing. You have hundreds or thousands of different use cases from, uh, and, and businesses uh, and many ways to use the internet. It's exactly the same with blockchain and the cryptocurrencies. Okay, so that's interesting. Not all cryptocurrencies are actually meant as currencies. Yeah, I mean, they can be used as currencies, but not only, you know, there, yeah. there are many other ways to use as, you know, there are utility tokens, there are government governance tokens, which we may talk about it later on details, but yes, there are, they can be used uh, for many things at the same time. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Now, back to what is a good crypto project. There's thousands of them by now, different uh, mm -hmm. currencies and coins and tokens. Um, how do I recognize which are actually good, which I want to get involved in? Well, research, first of all, is uh, the most important thing. Like any investment, uh, you have to understand the asset itself. You have uh, to read the white paper, which is actually describes in a cryptocurrency project, uh, describes what it wants to do, its goals, the, you know, the team behind it, uh, what are their uh, token economics, which is the most important thing for an investor standpoint, which they want to invest in the token. So you have to look at many different things. You have to look at the team, you know, their background. Uh, are they good enough? Are they, you know, dedicated to the project or they're just, uh, you know, because there are many scams, unfortunately, in the industry. It's it's a new industry and uh, many people just uh, don't do enough research and, you know, they don't look enough for, you know, like the team background. if. Many, many teams lie about their background mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they, they spread like fancy words on the white paper to make, you know, uh, their investment or their project attractive. So you have to look extensively for the team, look at any social media possible on LinkedIn, Twitter, any information you can find about the team, make sure, you know, they are legit and uh, they can, you know, do whatever they have promised on the white paper. And then for the project itself, it's, uh, I mean, it depends on uh, each investor, but uh, the goal is to find a crypto project that solves a problem. If it's an, a generic crypto that uh, doesn't bring anything new to the market, to the industry, and uh, you know, there are many copycats, mm -hmm. it's very easy since you know most projects in blockchain is open source. Anyone can copy the code and create a copy and with a different name in just a few minutes. It's it's very easy actually. So you have to look at uh, the innovation. What is this project bringing to the market? What the problem? What is the problem that is solving? And uh, how it can achieve it? So this is the most important thing. Is it solving a real problem in the world? Uh, will it bring you know the adoption? Uh, and will people become interested because there are some use cases that uh, are very complex for people to understand. So even though you can say they are good projects, they don't attract many people because they are very complex and they don't uh, aim the average person, but let's say developers or people that uh, are very familiar with uh, the underlying technology and how things work. So yeah, you have to look at many things and uh, you know, like a normal company, you have to look at the fundamentals and uh, you have to look uh, at the, you know, statistics and the uh, information provided by the team. You have to look at the progress, how if they, you know, complete their promises and uh, if they're actually achieving, you know, what they have said in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's, it's many things you have to see to see if the project is actually good. It's, it's not that easy because, yeah, many people just jump right, jump right in without doing any research and then they end up uh, usually losing money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So with that difficulties in checking the team and understanding the use cases, is that, is that an, an important problem they're solving? Uh, would you recommend uh, people, especially people who start to just stick to Bitcoin or would you recommend altcoins as well? Uh, well, it's uh, a difficult question because uh, as a person who loves innovation, especially, and uh, always trying to find improvements, I just uh, can't support Bitcoin anymore. And uh, from the technological point of view, mm -hmm. because as with every industry, there has never been a first, uh, first come, first win approach. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, on the internet, let's say Alta Vista and Google, or uh, you know, with music like uh, Napster and iTunes, you know, the first one that came in a new industry never was the winner, because uh, you know that's how things were. That's uh, uh, the point of innovation. You know, something new and new products come in with a better, uh, you know, you know, with better improvements, and uh, 
solves you know something better and a problem that uh, people want and need at that time so uh, yeah I mean for Bitcoin uh, yeah it was the first and uh, it's now currently the first because the market is still new it's only 12 years since uh, you know Bitcoin began and the market uh, is technically new but uh, you know the world constantly evolves and people's needs change Bitcoin was created in 2009 and uh, for the first two or three years, yes, it was the best because you know there was nothing else, more or less. Uh, there was no other cryptocurrency, and it solved the problem that Satoshi designed it to be, which was a decentralized payment system where uh, you could transact with no middlemen. And then more cryptocurrencies started to be up, to be created and appearing. Uh, for example, XRP uh, came out in 2012. And the, world, uh, the goal was uh, to make a better Bitcoin. So they brought a new innovation. They created a more efficient system with a different uh, consensus algorithm that didn't need mining or proof of work. So with Bitcoin, for example, you need around 10 minutes. Actually, you need it in the beginning 10 minutes uh, to make a transaction. Right now, it can take uh, anywhere from 10 to hours in uh, periods with big activities. So... Uh, yeah, you have uh, actually, you know, the process of proof of work and mining, which is, uh, we can say outdated. Uh, so yes, that makes Bitcoin uh, slow and expensive right now mm -hmm. compared to other new cryptocurrencies. For example, XRP, it takes just three seconds to make a transaction and it's, it costs a fraction of a cent, like, uh, in, like, uh, for example, with Bitcoin, it can take from uh, five dollars on average to fifty or one hundred dollars, depending on the mm. period of activity. Like, but with XRP, for example, because they created a new, completely new system, uh, they don't have that problem. So it just stays there at three seconds, and uh, you know, at a fraction of a cent for, uh, per payment. So for payments, for example, right now XRP is the best one to use. And uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is far from the best at, at, uh, for this use case. And uh, it's very limited also. You can't add any significant improvements uh, on Bitcoin network. And uh, right now it's unusable for payments, which was the main goal that was created for, uh, by Satoshi. Mm. So for that reason, it has evolved into more as a store of value or a digital, a digital gold, like uh, people say because it's unusable for payments and uh, many people can argue that yeah bitcoin is not a good store of value because it has big volatility mm -hmm. so yeah if we take all things one by one we can see that bitcoin doesn't have any actual meaningful usage and uh, or use case in the industry because it's not efficient anymore it's not uh, you know you can't use it actually for anything because it's expensive, it's slow, and uh, you have all the new different system and cryptocurrencies being created right now. You have uh, advanced, you have smart contracts, for example, with Ethereum, which Bitcoin network can support because it's very limited. Yeah. We have all kinds of new use cases and uh, you know type of businesses, let's say, building on blockchain that you can't build on Bitcoin and you you can use Bitcoin. And that's why I can't support personally uh, from the technological point of view, Bitcoin. So if, you know, someone new comes to me and say, I want to invest in cryptocurrencies, of course, it depends on their risk tolerance. Uh, if they say to me, I just want something more certain, I, I don't like risk very much. I'm just, I want to stick to the top ones. Yes, I might recommend to, you know, a share, you know, a percentage to be on Bitcoin. But uh, yeah, I will never recommend just going all in on Bitcoin because uh, I think that's a that's a bad move, especially for the, for the long term. Okay, so you think at some point Bitcoin will be replaced by someone more f efficient, faster? Yeah, I, think, I think it's a matter of time uh, because you know every industry in the past has proven that you know as innovation go goes in and, uh, with new products and uh, you know new things coming in. Uh, yeah, the first, you know, it's only a matter of time uh, before Bitcoin loses the number one position. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, for example, there are many new use cases. Uh, we have uh, decentralized finance, we have NFTs that makes it a little bit easier for the average person to join in, the, the outsiders. For example, with NFTs, it's, uh, they have big momentum since last year and many people have joined, even not understanding what blockchain uh, is on how it works. So it's things like that that will bring mass adoption. Uh, it's, you know, the user experience and, uh, you know, efficiency that will bring, the, you know, the big, the many people in the industry. And Bitcoin can do that. So, yeah, I think, yeah, the future is multi-chain. Mm -hmm. There will not be just one winner or one network to, to dominate. But, uh, yeah, the goal is to have seamless interoperability between networks. So users can e easily use whatever they like. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not like Bitcoin or altcoins. I consider just all cryptocurrencies. I, I, I don't see Bitcoin as something unique. Yeah, it was the first, but you know, I don't see them as, uh, you see some Bitcoin maximalists saying uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin is the best and uh, everything else is, uh, you know, is worse and, uh, you know, it's not worth it. Yeah, just support the industry as a whole. I support innovation. Uh, so yes, I, I support many projects. So yes, it's it's not just Bitcoin. Okay, great, thank you. And since you mentioned NFTs, I have had a short look into NFTs, and there's by now thousands of projects as well. And yeah. well, they, and so much work in how to f uh, in finding out about their plans, their teams, whatever. Uh, how do you find uh, NFT investments that make sense? Since you said it's uh, simpler, I, I found the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I, there is also a big misconception with NFTs uh, because many people think that, you know, you know, the most common use case right now with NFTs is art, you know, digital art, uh, for example, and uh, JPEGs, like pictures, as people say. And many people think that the NFTs are the pictures of the, the art itself, but uh, it's far from that. The NFT is just a token. It's non-fungible token. It's it's a unique token, which can actually represent anything digital or physical. For example, it can be art. It can be a gaming item. Uh, it can be your house or anything, you know, a physical object uh, you want to represent. It can be a basket of, uh, let's say, a portfolio of investments you can tokenize this and make it into an nft so yes the nft is a token that can represent anything digital or physical it's not the art itself it's not the asset behind that itself that's what many people misunderstand saying that uh, you know nfts are a scam or overrated because they see pictures selling for thousands or millions of dollars uh, but yeah, that's not what NFTs are. It's just a small part uh, of the NFTs, what you know anyone can want to represent to it. So personally, I'm not just I'm not that bullish, let's say, into just pictures or art. I'm more bullish uh, in NFTs when it comes to more important use cases, such as physical assets, for example, real estate it can solve important problems, uh, especially in combination with smart contracts. It can make the real estate industry more efficient, uh, easier to trade and, uh, you know, make sales and, uh, you know, the whole procedure of buying and selling real estate uh, easier. So yes, I'm more bullish on NFTs when it comes to real use cases like that. Or for example, you can uh, represent a domain into an NFT uh, for example, you have Unstoppable Domains. It's uh, a project that sells domains that never expire. They are based on blockchain. So that's, uh, that is that is you know the kind of use case that I'm bullish on NFTs, not just you know, pictures or uh, mm -hmm. things that are just hyped at the moment. And uh, yes, of course, for whoever loves art, yeah, they find they can find that important or for creators or for artists. Yes, that's uh, that might be interesting and uh, important for them, but yeah, it's it's up to the person. It's not that NFTs are just for art; they can, 
be for you know hundreds of use cases. They can be for music, for example. It's important for uh, music creators. They can uh, create their songs. They can upload them into NFTs and sell them, and uh, actually they can uh, benefit from the use of the technology instead of going on Spotify, for example, which takes a big cut from creators. So yes, NFTs is just a technology. It's not, uh, not the, the, the art, the picture, or whatever people trying to spread negativity about. It's just the technology and you can use it for many things, for whatever you like. And that's, that's the point of it. I think you, it can be used for great things, can be used for bad things, it's up to the you know the person uh, how you will use the technology. Okay, not just board eight pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> because some people might wonder why some pictures are selling for millions. Uh, I think it's uh, with cryptocurrencies, and when you enter the crypto community, let's say, you have a feeling that uh, you know you belong somewhere especially when we talk about Web3, which is, uh, you know, Web3 is technically everything that has to do with crypto, NFT, smart contracts, just under the umbrella of the, the Web3. So when we say Web3, we refer to just blockchain and the crypto as a whole. But uh, Web3 community is, uh, you know, something, you know, it's welcoming and uh, when new people come in, uh, people want to be a part of it. So when you have a team to create some pictures, for example, and uh, they are limited, they are only, for example, 10,000, let's say the board apes, and there are millions of potential investors, there is scarcity, and people want to be a part of that community. So like any investment, you know, the bigger the demand, the bigger the price, and with that limited uh you know, without limited supply, of course, there will be higher prices. And uh, yes, many people say that this is stupidity. I will never spend that much money in a picture. But uh, you, we can see in the real world why there are, you know, artworks that, uh, for example, a banana, a simple banana that was sold, I think, for millions of dollars. You can see countless of similar examples in the real world where people spent millions for basically in my opinion nothing it's it's worthless for me but you know for them it might be important it be worth a lot so yeah some people worth uh, spend millions but yeah it's it's up to them it doesn't mean it's stupid it might be stupid you know for you uh, specifically but but not you know for for everyone so yes it's uh, about the community it's about uh, you know whoever loves that thing and wants to spend their money on. So yeah, it's uh, that's more or less how, how it works. Great, thank you. Now we're getting uh, close to the end. <laughs> uh, time's <laughs> up, although where there's so much more uh, we could talk about in more details. <laughs> Maybe you come back sometime. Uh, yeah, of course. To talk more about NFTs or DeFi or Web3 or... Uh, yeah. So what would be your, for, for people starting in crypto, what would be your, your best advice, how, how to start, how to, how to invest or how to make money with crypto? Uh, well, I have generally 10 tips that I give any new person or beginner that comes into the market. And uh, I always say that always do your own extensive research and understand the asset you want to invest into. Do not rely on others' opinions and uh, do not invest just because there is hype about a specific project or there are many people talk talking about the project. Always do your own research, as we said uh, in the beginning. Try to see if this project is actually solving a problem. It actually has a real use in the real world and uh, you know, see the background of the team, see all the whole project, if it's actually useful and innovative, uh, then go for it. And uh, another one is to always invest when you can afford to lose. First, ensure that you have savings and cash uh, and an emergency fund uh, for any case and then invest. Uh, and sadly, many people don't do that. They even, you know, take their savings and invest them in risky assets. So do not invest your savings, do not invest money you'll need anytime soon. And uh, yeah, 
do not spend money you didn't intend to invest before a bull run because when there is a bull run people get uh, tend to get excited and spend more money than what they tended to so don't do that just stick to the plan and uh, the best strategy i would say would be to dca dollar cost average to dollar cost averaging to spend uh, invest an amount regularly for for let's say a thousand dollars per month whatever that amount uh, may be for you just invest regularly every month stick to the plan stick to the good projects and uh, yeah build a good portfolio that's that's the goal and uh, another tip is to stay to actually leave emotions out of investing uh, many people don't do that unfortunately uh, because uh, there's a lot of fear and greed, which are the two biggest enemies when it comes to investing. Uh, you know, when there's a bear market, there's a lot of fear. People tend to sell in, in a loss and the opposite in a bull run, they tend to buy when the asset is going up. And you have to leave emotions out of investing. As we said, stick to the plan and the investing should be a, a cold calculated uh, plan where you stick to it and uh, as long as your underlying thesis for your investment and its fundamentals haven't changed neither should your emotions so that's why you should never panic sell or uh, sell after a crash has happened it's the worst time to sell uh, an investment if if you sell before a crash that's great you win but that's pure luck but after a crash has happened never sell it's it's literally the worst uh, time to, to sell an asset. And uh, of course, do not be greedy. You know, you, you fall into the trap of selling to buy back cheaper. Many, many people also do that and try to trade or to make, uh, make uh, back their losses. Uh, personally, I'm against trading. Uh, I have tried that in the past and, uh, you know, I have, as I have studied finance and I have seen how trading works. I have tried it myself and I don't recommend it. Uh, because of that, it's pure luck and gambling, I would say. No, nobody knows what will happen, especially in the short term. And uh, I would say just stick to the long term, focus on good assets, because in the long term, when you have invested in good, in good assets, it, you will always be a winner. So do not attempt to trade and uh, try to predict what the next move will be in the market because nobody knows mm -hmm. and whoever claims that I will stay away from from that person and uh, yeah in that way learn how to manage your risk know what investor you are and how risk tolerant you are mm -hmm. many people invest uh, in risk assets and then later they, re they realize that they can't tolerate that much volatility so it's important to have self-awareness and recognize what investor and person you are. So stick to the assets you really want to, and you can afford you know, to, to not to be calm and not be panicking every day. And another thing is to not follow YouTubers or influencers that make price predictions. Uh, there are tons of that make, you know, every day, take an analysis, uh, they make predictions or try to create hype or panic. And many people, especially beginners, fall into them. They try to make to take advices from them and uh, they usually end up in losses. So I would say stay away from any kind of predictions and YouTubers that try to predict anything. Stick to your research and uh, the actual adoption of the crypto industry in the long term. And finally, just relax and enjoy the ride. It's just the beginning of the most important decade for the crypto and blockchain. And of course, there will be crashes and corrections in between. That's how every market works. But uh, the long term is what matters. And the long term potential for the whole crypto industry is uh, massive and bigger than any industry as we've seen the last 10 years. And there are many things to see. So that's, uh, that's my tips. Great, thank you. That was some great investment advice, not only for crypto, but for many other and, things, most other investments. Yeah, I, I, I have another thing because yes. it's not actually about you know how to make money, but uh, when a beginner comes into the crypto, you know, in the crypto market, they begin with an exchange. They don't know, you know, actually the use of wallets. It's 
a complex for a beginner. But I would say uh, once you realize how things work, and once you have done your research, do not store your crypto or any assets on exchanges and centralized platforms. The whole goal of crypto is uh, to be your own bank. That's the main point to you know, have full control over your money and assets. And uh, yeah, just there are many wallets uh, that you can be your own bank. You can uh, you know, have full control and don't trust third parties that can shut uh, down anytime. They can be hacked and you can lose your assets and or your savings anytime. So the point is to be your own bank. And uh, yeah, that's what you should do after you do your own research. Try to be your own bank. That's your goal. And that's how you can benefit in many ways by using the technology. Great. Thank you. So don't store your cryptos on an exchange. Store them in a wallet. And one That's more thing, right. you've recently published the book, Understanding the Crypto Economy. Where can people find it or reach out to you if they would like to know more? Uh, it's on Amazon uh, for the paperback. And uh, if you search Understanding the Crypto Economy, you will find it. And it's uh, if you want the digital version of the book, it's on Payhip. Uh, actually, if you go to on my Twitter, uh, you know, Panos Mech is my, my handle. Uh, you'll find I have the links uh, on, on the first page in my profile. So you'll find there all the links for my book. And uh, yeah, either you want the paperback or the digital version. Yeah, it's there. Great. We'll share the links with this episode. And again, thank you so much for coming, Panos. It's been great. Thank you. Maybe you'll come back sometime to go into some more details. Yeah, I mean, there are so many things to talk about. And uh, we only scratched, we didn't even scratch the, uh, the surface. So yeah, there are many things to talk about, you know, the industry. So yeah, I'll be glad to come again. Great. Thanks a lot. And thank you very much for listening. I'm looking forward to talking to you again in our next episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a great day as well. Thank you for listening to the Money and Business Hero podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you got some value from it. Please take a moment to leave a rating or even better, a review. That helps awesome people like you to find the show and me to produce more and even better episodes. And don't forget to subscribe. I even have an amazing gift for you if you leave a great review. I'll be running a two-day Money Hero Bootcamp where we will work on those three pillars of financial success so you will be able to rewrite your financial story for great success. The price for those two days is $197. And I will invite you as my guest. You can join the program for free if you leave a good review for this awesome new podcast. So I hope to see you on the next episode and on that Money Hero Bootcamp. Thank you and see or hear you soon.